You see this backtest? You see this code? I didn't even write any of this code. I built this code using a visual builder. Check this out. I built a visual builder where you could drag and drop puzzle pieces onto a canvas, connect them all together in various ways, and you could create custom indicators and scripts. And then once you've finished, you can export your creation to PineScript completely error free. In this video, I'm going to show you how you could use the visual builder and how you could create your very own first script too. So I should say before we start real quick that this visual builder is free. So it's completely free. Sign up in the link in the description. Uh, there's no limitations. So it's definitely worth checking out. All right, so let's get started. All right, so once you've created your account, you could find the link to the visual builder on the left side here. Once you click that, it's going to load it up just like we've got here. I'll just quickly give you a rundown of what you're looking at. So at the top here you have um, your script name which you could change by clicking this and updating it. You could load some templates that we've, I've already made for you to get started. Um, it's a new project button. You could export um, your script to PineScript once you're finished. Or you could download it, copy and paste it. And then we have the save and run button. On this side, this is our canvas. So this is where we'll be placing those puzzle pieces and building our script. And on this side, we have our chart. So this side will be showing what our script is doing and what it's displaying um, live. So once we click the save and run button, it's going to convert our puzzle pieces into an indicator or a strategy right here so we can see that it's working. And then at the end, you could export it and take it into trading view. So that's the basic rundown of the layout. Let's get started with some of these blocks. All right, so let me show you how the puzzle pieces. I'm going to jump over to this canvas over here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to minimize this AI tips. But otherwise, um, reading these are very helpful. I'm going to just minimize that and get that out of the way. So on our left-hand side here, on the left-hand side, we have all our categories of our blocks. So if I click into one of these, you could actually see the individual puzzle pieces themselves. So we have lots of categories here. Data, math, indicators, logic, series, plot. And draw. So we could draw boxes and lines, we could plot lines and shapes, um, we could do some basic um, math stuff and we've got some data as well. Now all you want to do is essentially we're going to start off with just a simple uh, data block like this. I'm just going to grab the close and you want to just drag and drop it onto the canvas here. Now you notice the first thing that pops up over here is we have our inspector panel. It allows us to go into the block and control some of its settings. So the inspector panel for this close block, we could actually control the closes offset. So if we want the most recent close, which is zero, or like one close ago or two closes ago, we could just leave that at that at the moment. So if I click away on the block, the inspector panel goes away. So at the moment, we've got a close block, but if I click save and run, we're not actually going to see anything. We need to actually draw something on the chart by either doing the plot here or the so I could go over here and um, add something in but another easy way to do it is just see this little plus sign here I'm just gonna click this and it's called the quick connect and it's gonna give me some quick options that I might be interested in um, doing straight away and I'm gonna click plot line here now you can see it's automatically added that block and connected them up and you could see like little puzzle pieces here you could click and clack them together and then if I click on this plot line too, you can see it's got its own custom panel. Um, we could choose color and the width. So we could go in here, and maybe make it like yeah, red, for example, and then maybe make it a bit fatter. And then that's it. So we have, and we move this block around and it moves both the puzzle pieces. Now we're, now this simple script, if we save and run, it's gonna plot the line of the close. And that's the close of two candles a bar. So if we do that, you can immediately see that um, yeah, it's drawing something on our chart over here. We've got a fat red line that we could barely see, <laughs> and it's uh, um, drawing the candle offset of two bars ago. So you can see here, it's the close here, and it's shifting the whole line. So that's just a basic example. You could, of course, we could go into here, we could like change the width, change it a bit slimmer, click save and run. You can see it updates straight away. We could maybe we don't want the close, we would just want the recent close, and then we're now we've got the recent close. If you don't want the close, we could grab this and we could go put this right in the bin. We can go back up to our data and maybe we want to uh, plot the high. We come down and we could snap it right into that, and then we click save and run, and you can see now it's plotting the high. It's really cool. 
if you wanted to add more, say we're plotting the high, let's plot the low now. We can add the low, drag it on. We click this quick connect, it's already got the line here, just like that. We can make sure that's already blue, and there we go. So you can see we've got two lines now plotting the high and low, and you've got the inspector panels. You could change all the colors and offsets. So that's just a super basic example. Let's turn it up a notch and use some of the indicators. Okay, so another quick example I just want to quickly show you before we move on to the indicators is um, just like some conditions. So what do I mean by that? So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab the close. I'm going to start with that and then I'm going to use this quick connect. Do A is bigger than B. So that here is our condition. Um, it's our logic block, sorry. So we're going to use one of our logic blocks. Now you can see that's um, snapped automatically on, but we need to fill out this side as well. So we're going to say A, which is the close. If the close is bigger than B, and we're going to make B, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to go over to data and we're going to make B the open. So if the close is bigger than the open, we're going to uh, plot a shape. And then this shape, we're going to go going to be below the bar, arrow up, small, let's have a look. So just like that, using some logic blocks here, we've got some conditions now. You can see it's plotting the shapes only on the green bars, none of the red. If you wanted to reverse it, you could easily just take these out and flip them around. So now it's only on the red bar. So that's just this one here. You could do, there's heaps of other logic blocks too, so maybe if A and B is something else, and uh, there's a lot more you could do to that. All right, let's jump into the indicators, and I'll show you guys how to use them. All right, let's check out some of these indicators. Now the indicators work just like the other blocks, except there's one minor difference. You don't have to draw or plot anything with these indicators. The drawings come built into them already. So take, let's take a look. So I'm going to drag across, let's go to do the EMA indicator, so I'm going to drag that onto the canvas here. And you can see it opens up um, the inspector panel here, and there's lots of options here. We've got um, the one section, which is the compute, and which is like all the data stuff, so we can change the length and the source. And then we've got the styles, we've got the, the line width and everything here. If you wanted to turn the display off, you could turn the display off here. But otherwise, this is all you need to show an EMA. So that's it. So if I click and run this, you can see it's showing a blue 20 EMA um, using the close. So that's just that's how easy it is using these indicator blocks. Now, if you wanted to use this indicator block and build something on it, let's I'll show you how to do that. So you can't actually plug blocks into this indicator block um, by itself. See this puzzle piece? It doesn't have any like places to plug the other puzzle pieces in. The way you do that is you want to go over here and you want to add this output block. So these other indicators have their own output blocks. And I'm going to click this and it's going to basically create a new puzzle piece. This puzzle piece, you can see it's the EMA value. So the EMA value is like the value of the EMA. So it's this line here. And you can see this does have a little puzzle piece um, connection here. So we can build um, things with it. This inspector panel you see, so when I click on this, it opens up the same inspector panel uh, for this EMA, by the way. So these are the same. So you could click on this, we could change the color, just like we did before. Now to make, um, to make a condition out of this, make some logic, we could just do like what we just did before. So we click this, um, this quick connect. We could do A is bigger than B, just like we did before. A is now the EMA value. Actually, you know what, let's change this to B. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to use the close. So now A, the close is bigger than the EMA. So if the close is bigger than the EMA, we can, we could just plot a shape. We could just do that for the moment. Now you can see, so if the close is bigger than the EMA, we have all these shapes up here. And then if we go back a bit, you can see there's no shapes on underneath. Now you can see we're starting to use these conditions and we could start to build out our ideas. We could stack other indicators in to these conditions and we could start to really flush out ideas. So this is just 
this is just a very basic, you know, yeah, close above the EMA, but we could add in, of course, another EMA block, add an RSI, we could add different filters with different logic blocks, and then plot shapes or labels and draw lines and boxes for different conditions. Let's take a look at another indicator. Um, so I'm going to just new project this. I'm going to go back to the indicators and I'm going to show you what the MACD looks like. Let's drag this MACD onto the screen here. I'm just going to run it straight away so we can just see what it looks like. You can see it loads up a nice new panel. At the bottom down here we've got the MACD lines and histogram. On this side, uh, clicking onto it, you can see we have a much larger inspection, um, inspector panel here. You have the same compute at the top, and this is where we control all the settings. We've got the close, the fast, slow signal, all the inputs here. Then we have the three outputs. So we've got the line, which is the green one. Uh, we've got the signal line, which is the golden yellow, and then we've got the histogram, of course. Now, just like we did with the EMA, if you wanted to connect something into this MACD, you could see all of these have their own output blocks. So say if you want a strategy or some sort of indicator that has these two crossing over, we could click Add Output Block for this one and Add Output Block for that one. So just add it over here. Now we have these two blocks we could do just like we did before. We build our strategy using our logic. I'm going to do a series here. I'm going to do a crossover. So I'm going to do snap it to that one. So for the MACD line, so that's the green line. The green line uh, crosses above the signal line, crosses over. So this, this one will be a buy signal right here. And we're going to plot a shape. And then you can see the shape here. We're going to do, we'll plot a below the bar arrow up. And I'm going to click run. So you can see now we've got um, arrows on the chart here that line up exactly when the MACD line is crossing. We have some crosses down here, we have some crosses over here. If you wanted to add more signals into this, you could easily, we could just keep building. We could just keep building, we could go add another indicator. Let's add in an SMA now. Now I want to grab that output block. And then I'm going to check, so we're going to change this. I'm going to change this, so I want to check if there's a MACD crossover, but we want to also be above the SMA. So I'm going to pull this off here and separate it. I'm going to keep this little chunk here. I'm going to build this one out. I'm going to click this. I'm going to go back to the A over B. I'm going to drag this to the B, the bottom one. Add the close. So now this says if the close is bigger than the SMA. So now we have two of these like conditions here. We have the MACD crossover plus this. So now we just need a logic and it says A and B, which is just if both these are true, we could easily snap them together, snap that back to plot line. Now we have two separate conditions. So if the MACD crosses over and the close is above the SMA, then we're going to plot the shape. Save and run. And immediately it filters out all these signals here because that was under the SMA. And now we're just looking at these buy signals uh, just above the SMA. And just like this, snapping and clicking some puzzle pieces together, we've made our first script. And once you've finished creating, all you need to do to get your code for your script is come up to here to export. Export, I'm just going to go copy and paste, Pine Script 6, and that's it. Then you go to Trading View, come in into this Pine Editor, and that's all your code right there. All you have to do is update the chart, and that's it. This video is getting a bit long at the moment, so I'm going to wrap things up. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know. If you enjoyed the vi visual builder, please definitely let me know. Like the video, comment. What I said at the beginning when I said it's just a bit of a demo, I was specifically talking about like this indicator section here. You might notice there's only five indicators. I know that's not a lot, but but I want to know if you guys like this, then I could easily build out um, to be way, way more indicators. So, And then once we, you've got like 50 or 100 other indicators, this is basically finished. You could build you know, definitely a lot of things. 
a lot of things with completely no errors. So definitely, if you love it, make sure you show me some love. And that's about it. Thanks, guys.